from the stadium complex in Piscataway, New Jersey at the RU Turf Field. Our vision, presented by AT&T, brings you Rutgers Scarlet Knights women's lacrosse. Today, the number five Syracuse Orange at 6-3, and 2-0 and oh in the Big East. Visit Rutgers at 8-3 and 0-2 and oh and in conference. Welcome again, everyone, to the Bush Campus. Danny Breslauer joined by Kyle Franco here today. Kyle, before we get into the storylines for this one, obviously a very special day for the Rutgers women's lacrosse family. It's Friends of Jacqueline Day, and Jenna Camiolo is here raising awareness for pediatric brain tumors. Yeah, certainly a, a nice gesture by the Scarlet Knights. Um, you know, they've, they've become friends with Jenna, uh, you know, over the season, and it's a great opportunity for her to get out today and, and watch the game and also for a great cause great cause that this Rutgers women's lacrosse team is doing. It's a cause that started in the fall of 2008 with Northwestern, but eventually strong Rutgers ties through Jenna Camiolo and the Friends of Jacqueline program. Laura Brensai is telling me this week just how excited they are to be paired with Jenna and while her family goes through this process and they get strength from her in the bigger picture. And there are the Scarlet Knights that come into today Coming off a loss of 8-7 to seven on Friday against UConn, it was a seesaw affair, Kyle. Yeah, it was, and, and they could use some of that strength today because this is a big game. Uh, you know, remember we were talking about that five-game homestand Rutgers has. It's really going to make or break this season. Well, it didn't get off to a good start with that loss to UConn. In comes Syracuse today, another chance to win for, for Rutgers, uh, a Big East win, get, get on the board, but this is a really good Syracuse team. Rutgers led by 11th year head coach Laura Bransias, the Rutgers grad. On the Syracuse end, they're led by Gary Gate, his sixth year as head coach, the Syracuse grad of 1990. And if you follow Syracuse men's lacrosse, that name Play a little will bit. be extremely, extremely familiar. Gate was an Orange All-American Lacrosse Hall of Famer during his time there in 1988 through 1990. Kyle Rutgers today, your keys for a team that comes off an 8-7 loss to UConn. Well, get off to a good start. Remember in that game against UConn, they fell behind 5-2 in the first half and had to work their way back in the game. They eventually got level, although UConn ended up scoring that game winner, and then Rutgers couldn't get another one in that final nine minutes. So today, I think it's important that the Scott Knights are able to get off to a good start, get some goals early, see if you can build yourself a lead and, and play in from in front. The senior goalie, Lily Collada. Rutgers' first opening draw, Jenny Vlahos out there, the sophomore midfielder from Manhasset, New York. So important to dictate the tempo as it is in any sport, but in this case, it all starts and ends at the draw control spot. And then Lily Collada, who was very active on Friday, made 13 saves. She'll be called upon again to do yeah, that. She, yeah, she's a senior back there for the Scarlet Knights. So she's the anchor of that defense. And, and today, she's obviously, she's going to be tested against a team like Syracuse. And, and if she doesn't come up with some big saves, Rutgers isn't going to win this game. And the opening draw goes the way of Syracuse. The Orange are the number five team in the country, but they come in six and three, Kyle, and you may ask, how could the number five team in the country be six and three? Well, it's because their three losses are to three top four programs in Northwestern, Maryland, and then as well to Florida, which is, by the way, a very young program that found its way all the way to the number one ranking a year ago. But they are outstanding in every respect. It starts and ends with Alyssa Murray, their attack, who has five goals in three consecutive contests. Yeah, and certainly if you even look at their schedule, but they've got wins over Virginia and Towson, both teams that are ranked in the top 20. That loss to Northwestern was on the road and only by a point. So certainly, uh, you know, a very good team. And as you said, Alyssa Murphy, 24 goals. She's certainly the danger player for the Orange. And Murray, the one to look out for. Play two 30-minute halves here. Speaking of Murray, she'll get things triggered from top slot as she comes around to Katie Webster. It'll be Murray and Webster top slot most often. Trainer and Tumalo behind the cage. And those two from X have been the trigger starters for this orange team. There's a cut. Kalata has it covered up in the crease, and it pops out loose, and a ground ball for Rutgers, and it settles down to Amanda Trendell, and Kyle, she had herself a day on Friday, forcing a series of turnovers and picking up four ground balls. Yeah, and certainly they're a good start for the Scarlet Knights on defense. Syracuse looking for the cutter down the middle. Rutgers able to break it up and come away with the ground ball. Early clear for Rutgers through Claire McDougal. Rutgers in that 8-7 loss to Connecticut, putting up 21 shots on goal. That's a big number. Trendell, the dodge cut, and through on a bounce. Rutgers a 1-0 lead after just a minute and 50 seconds. Well, Danny, we talked about getting off to a good start in the opening, and there it was. You come out, first defensive possession, 
You're able to stymie Syracuse. You come down on the other end, and Amanda Trendell with a nice little dodge, and then the lefty shot, using the turf to her advantage, goes low and is able to bounce it in. For Trendell, her 12th goal of the year. She has started every game, and in doing so at midfield, has picked up a 62.5 shot on goal percentage. So for Trendell and for Rutgers, exactly what the doctor ordered out of the gate a minute 50 in to take the lead. Yeah, Danny, and we'll see it, saw it there. Uh, something that's going to be a key is Rutgers' one-on-one -on -one ability against defenders. You remember we had the Princeton game sure. here, uh, and, and we saw it in that game where Rutgers didn't have a lot of assists in this, but they still were able to score a bunch of goals and win because they have some, some great athletes that can go one-on-one -on -one and, and take somebody on and beat them, like we saw there with Trendell on the dodge. It's so important for Trendell, who got that split dodge. The red shirt junior attack out of Yorktown Heights, New York. Who battled through injuries back in 2010. Red shirt of the year. Saw some action at attack but found her way into the starting lineup this year. The former Class A state champion in New York. Syracuse's second offensive possession starts up top with Lindley Block and the dodge from Webster and another knock away from Rutgers. That one was triggered by Intra Bartola. Syracuse appears to still be on it and there's some contact and it will go orange way. Well, you know, Danny, right there, another good stop for the Scarlet Knights is, is Syracuse trying to attack the cage. But let's see if Rutgers plays with a sense of urgency today. They know this is a game that they really need to win after going, starting 0-2 in the Big East. Three minutes in, it's a 1-0 lead for Rutgers over Syracuse on a goal by Amanda Trendell. A minute 50 in, and there's the equalizer. It's right on the crease extended, a little flick in from Michelle Tumala. She's been another one of those major players for Syracuse this year. The senior attack from Mulica Hill, New Jersey, and Clearview Regional. I'll tell you what, Danny, I, I liked what Tumalo did there. Crease extended, she just kind of looked Lily Collada off, like she was gonna, gonna center that. Gave her the eye, so to speak. Gets the goalkeeper's feet moving and then is able to come back short side and beat her with a nice shot. Tumalo uh, there for Syracuse pulls the orange, pu pulls the orange level. It's Tumalo's 18th goal of the year. And you know what's interesting? She's the only Jersey player on the Syracuse roster, um, you know, which I find interesting. Usually Syracuse is able, comes in the state uh, and grabs a handful of kids, but it, it's, I guess it's, it's cyclical in a way. Sure. Uh, and, and she's obviously the only one left uh, on that roster at the moment. Rutgers looking to equal their win output from a year ago with a victory today. Last year, nine and seven, four and four in the Big East, losing the final two games on that last weekend to miss out in the Big East tournament. But it was around this time last year that they got on fire, winning six of seven from March 10th through April 5th. So they'd like to maybe extend that from let's say April 7th through the end of May. And there's a bounce shot and a goal and Syracuse leads 2-1 is getting loose with Kayla Trainer from X where she's so comfortable. Yeah, that time Trainer just lost her marker. Nobody from Rutgers around her. It's a pretty easy finish when she comes around from X, circles the cage uh, and is able to beat Collado. The Scarlet's have got to do a better job getting tight to Trainer in that situation. Too much time and space. Trainer's 23rd goal of the year, that is Second on Syracuse to Alyssa Murray's 29. A good response by Syracuse, Danny, after going behind by a goal. Rutgers trying to get off to that good start. Trendell got him out in front. Well, the Orange have come right back and got two goals and grabbed the lead. It's two goals in 39 seconds for the Orange. To lead Rutgers 2-1 to one on goals from Tumalo and Trainer. Rutgers tally from Amanda Trendell. Another draw control victory for Syracuse, and they've done well through Liz Harbison so far today. Well, if you can control the, the, the draws, you're able to control tempo and, and maximize your offensive possession, so that's always a key uh, in lacrosse. Becca Block has been their best in that category at 37. I do have a few other options. And, and by the way, Syracuse can put some goals up, by the way, too. 18 uh, in a win over Connecticut, 17 in a win over Boston College, 19 in a win over Villanova, 21 in a win over Jacksonville. So they can score in bunches. That Jacksonville game, by the way, was the first D1 game of the year back on January 13th. Uh, played at a special date because of the ability to have weather down in Florida conducive to that. But the 19 goals you touched on for Syracuse against Villanova. That coming just 48 hours ago. First flag coming up, and it's offsides on Rutgers, and it'll be a free position chance for Syracuse. 
their first, and it will be Erica Boat, the freshman midfielder from Maryland. Straight on Kalata, Boat, got it! And it's 3-1 Syracuse on three goals in a minute and a half. Well, when you have the free position opportunity, it's something you have to be able to convert. Boat just goes right down the middle there and uses the bounce shot five hole on Lily Kalata. She's unable to get it closed up in time. It's Boat's fourth goal of the year. Syracuse leads three to one. And Kyle, the scoring has come so furiously. Four between the two sides in the first well, five minutes. Yeah, well, and as we've seen, Syracuse can score in bunches. Uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a game of runs at times. So you, you just got to now you got to weather this early storm. Okay, the Orange have got three. But you've got it. You got to be able to tighten things up. You can't let this get away from you early. If you're Rutgers, you've got to get a draw control here. I'll give Chrissy Schreiber a shot in the middle for Rutgers in the draw control category. The freshman midfielder from East Meadow, New York, and no dice. It's a Syracuse win as Becca Block, aforementioned in that category, comes out with it and sprints down the field. But loose, and Rutgers will get that back as the Scarlet Knights do force a Syracuse turnover as. Stepping in between with Sarah Mahone, the junior midfielder from Spring Lake Manasquan High School. And speaking to Laura Bransias this week, spoke of her team developing chemistry and how there were new faces in the attack coming into this year and how important it was to get those indoctrinated. So many freshmen, Kyle, that she was more concerned with getting time before getting into the idiosyncrasies of women's lacrosse. Yeah, but we should be at the time of the year here where they're, where they're not really freshmen anymore and everything should have gelled by now. I mean, you've got eight wins. This Rutgers team has eight wins. Things have, have gone pretty well yeah. so far. But you know what? It's 0-2 it's in the Big East. That's why this game's important uh, because you don't want to fall to 0-3 in the league. Rutgers did start 8-3 and three, as Kyle alluded to. That's where they are today. 7-1 and one was the initial start. They won 6 in a row from February 23 through March 19, as the Scarlet Knights will have their first offensive possession right in front of you in the left corner since their goal from Amanda Trendell. And that was just a minute and 50 seconds in, and since then about five minutes have elapsed where Syracuse has had full control of operations. As Trendell is fouled and will get a restart as reaching in was Bridget Daly. Trendell, split dodge, lost it on the way in. Rutgers foul, and Syracuse gets it back, Kyle. That appears to be the tactic today. You mentioned it off the open. Split dodge is trying to take players one-on-one. Yeah, one -on -one. Yep, Trendell that time tried to, tried to split the two players. Uh, that time she was unable to, to keep it in her stick as she went for the shot. Quick outlet for the Cuse. It'll be Liz Harbison right down the middle of the field, chasing her down is the promising freshman Haley Barnes, and she'll give up the foul. Well, it's unlucky on Haley Barnes because she worked back really well there so important recovery in just about any sport, especially field sports where you're covering more ground like that in transition. You're just tuning in, a little over seven minutes in, half number one, Syracuse leading Rutgers three to one in women's lacrosse action here on Our Vision presented by AT&T via scarletknights.com or at the RU turf field. Here's Tumalo, she has a goal already. And Lily Kalata steps in, that is what she does more so than a lot of other Big East goalkeepers, Kyle, we've emphasized her athleticism. Yeah, and right there she shows it because she reads what Syracuse wants to do with that pass and is also quick out of her crease off the line there to intercept it. The senior from Nesconset, New York, the Rutgers co-captain along with the injured Stephanie Anderson, has started in goal every game of her Rutgers career. So today, that marks game number 60. Big East Defensive Player of the Week for the second week of March. That was off a stretch where Rutgers beat number 20 Penn here at the RU Turf Field and followed it up by winning down in Newark, Delaware. Trendell, who has looked quite bright early on. Now Megan Clements, one of Rutgers' top attack options. Down low, wide open look, off the pipe as it's flung by McKinley. McKinley coming off injury from a few weeks back and Laura Bransias said she has been outstanding and stepping up where they've needed 
That time nearly missing yeah. a second. Yeah, but that time she should have scored from that tight end. I tell you it was a great pass by Megan Clements. That was the first time we got to see Clements involved in the in the attack and, and she picked out a great pass from McGinley, just unable to finish it. And again Collada knocking away a cross crease pass. Ground ball picked up by Intra Bartola. And here comes Jenny Vlahos. Rutgers defense allowing them to get shots like that on the spin by Schreiber. It's backed up by Rutgers on a sprint by Martinelli, RU's leading goal scorer. By a lot. Yeah, but we, ha we haven't seen her yet 10 minutes in. Martinelli hasn't been able to get a touch. Uh, so I, I think that's something Laura Brandsize would like to do is get her leading goal scorer some touches in close. There is Martinelli. 27 goals on the year for her. And there's a push. Martinelli, the junior from Moorestown, the South Jersey power. Wind picking up just a bit. A beautiful day, though. Here in early April, we've been blessed with some outstanding weather across our broadcast this weekend. Had a couple of baseball games for you against Seton Hall. Rubber game of that series going on simultaneously with us. A busy week coming up. Rutgers Princeton men's lacrosse at Yersack Field Tuesday night. Rutgers softball against Princeton Thursday. And then we'll have Rutgers baseball with two against Cincinnati next weekend. And then RU Villanova women's lacrosse here as well. McKinley! And that's what she needed the first go around, but she'll take it as she gets it with 1942 on the clock to make it 3 2 Syracuse. Yeah, and Rutgers really needed that too because Syracuse is going on that mini run to jump in front. Annie McGinley that time, you talk about why she's so valuable and why the Scranton Knights are so happy to have her back because she can do something like that. Again, good one-on-one -on -one work starting from the X position, works her way in front of the cage and is able to finish. You see the purple shirts for friends of Jacqueline and you see Annie McGinley grabbing a little bit of water. For McGinley, a 10th goal and mind you, just her fourth start since coming off of injury. Yeah, so you can see how valuable how valuable of a player she is. And for Laura Brand Sias there giving out instructions, the Rutgers 11th year head coach, trying to make sure her team doesn't get caught up too much in the pace, Kyle, you feel? Yeah, yeah, you can see Syracuse can, can score in bunches. We've already seen that the Orange will get up and down and, and, and run a lot. Um, so I think you always thought there were going to be some goals in this game, but I, I'm not sure you want to get into a shootout where it's up and down with Syracuse like that. Kirkland lost C4. Syracuse, Rutgers attempting to get a draw control here for the first time in quite a while. They won't get one as that pops into the stick of Casey Mock, the junior defender from Pennsylvania. Orange will keep it on the far sideline. 19.24 to go first half of play. We played two 30 minute halves. It's Rutgers trailing Syracuse three to two. Amanda Trendell with a goal for the Scarlet Knights. Andy McGinley with one. Tumalo, Trainer, and Boat, the three goals for Syracuse. Orange lost in last year's national championship game to Northwestern, eight to six. That a game played in Stony Brook, New York, out on Long Island. Syracuse went 8 and 0 in the Big East regular season and Kyle they have won 14 straight regular season games yeah, the, in this conference. Yeah, dominant force in this conference. Uh, Syracuse across very much a tradition. You know, see it on the men's side too. Always the class of the Big East year in and year out. Oh, that cut was nifty from Webster, missed wide. It is backed up by Tumalo. Here's Alyssa Murray. She's been a little quiet, hasn't needed to do much. Handing off for Trainer. Foul on Rutgers, it's on Turcotte. Stat line on Murray is gaudy coming in. 29 goals, 14 assists, and 81% shot on goal percentage. Remarkable. For Murray, the junior from West Babylon, New York. Tumula. Good D by Intra Bartola. Split by Murray. Lob to X and Trainer, just trying to size up the Rutgers defense. We saw Tumalo, Kyle, earlier get one with just a little bit of a flick from inside the post. Murray 
Now Murray, one on one down the left side, misses wide going far post. It is backed up by Tumala. Yeah, tough angle shot for Murray. Her, her momentum's kind of taking her away from the cage there. If that's the shot Syracuse is going to settle for, I think that's one that, that Laura Bransias and the Rutgers defense will take. You know, you would expect if that is on frame for Lily Collada to handle it. Laura Bransias, the former Scarlet Knights letter winner, as that's a cut and a goal. Tumalo had a great pass, and it was Amy Cross that finished. Cross here with 17.05 left in the first, makes it 4-2 Syracuse. It, it was, and it was too easy, Danny. You know, Rutgers can't give that up. Cross with the cut, and she just totally loses her marker. I'm not sure who it was from Rutgers, but just doesn't stay with the cutter. It's a pretty simple, you know, passing cut. Tumalo with a nice feed, and then Cross with the finish. She's not going to miss that wide open in front. Rutgers has got to get tighter, got to mark better than that. Cross's ninth goal of the year for Tumalo, an 18th assist, and that's really what she does, what she brings to the table. In addition to her goal scoring ability from X, she's able to make things well, happen. Yeah, she's, she's very much the playmaker when the ball's in her stick. You know, you come in, she came in 16 goals on the year. She's added one, so what, 17 goals with 15 assists? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so those numbers are very close to each other. 31 points on, 32 points on the year. So she's very much the player that's dangerous, ball in her stick. She can score or she can set up a teammate. Schreiber gave it a go for Rutgers on the draw. It's still loose. And Schreiber actually knocked that to herself. Well done. And Rutgers will keep it. Excellent work by the freshman midfielder from St. Anthony's High School on Long Island. Schreiber will try to throw it back to reset the possession for Rutgers. And it will be a push, so the Scarlet Knights will keep it. They did not have numbers and really had to yeah, reset. Yeah, a little fortunate there. They threw the ball the wrong way, and it wasn't a great pass from Schreiber. But Clement's able to recover it. We're trying to reestablish numbers as they'll take the wing with McGinley. She did score about three and a half minutes ago to bring the Scarlet Knights within one. Since then, Syracuse added a tally. They lead 4-2, to 16-15 to go first half of play here in Piscataway. Keep it hot, White! Keep it hot! Get your body out. Rutgers looking for a first win in April on the doorstep and a push. Rutgers will have a free position opportunity. It was a great look from Clements, who's had a couple decent passes early on, Kyle, and free position for Kim Kolodny. Yeah, second time Clements has been able to pick out a teammate in front, so she's not she's shown her, her vision and ability uh, to set others up as well. We already know she can score. Kolodny is straight on with the Syracuse goalie, Kelsey Richardson, the sophomore. Hasn't had many tests early. Kolodny and a save from Richardson right on cue. Kelsey Richardson has taken control of this starting spot, the sophomore from Memphis, New York. Yeah, she comes up with a nice save on the free position shot. She was able to read Kaledney's eyes, see what she wanted to do, that Kaledney trying to go low. Richardson able to get down first real test, and she passes. Turnover from Syracuse, though. RU takes it right back with Holly Demiro, the junior defender. Let's go, RU had been 22 of 56 on free position coming in. Whistle away from the ball. Trying to decide if Syracuse may be too many, too many field, defenders or too many people on the field. That's what Laura Bransias is saying from the sideline. And then the referees are saying, we've got it. <laughs> yeah. Try to count them for you as well. Nobody slid off the field that we saw. There's your overhead look as the crowd across the way is waiting intently for the decision between the three officials that are Huddled to the right of Demiro, standing on attentively. Yeah, it's 12 on the field. Yep, too many, too many players on the field. They'll call off Maddie Hugel, the freshman defender, out of West Genesee. That's a local high school up in Syracuse. It will allow Demiro to have an open lane to at least make something happen here. With Rutgers down, four to two, nearly midway through half number one. Keep it moving! Keep it moving! Clements. Now McGinley. She'll take it to X. Barnes had a pair of goals against UConn. Across the way, good look, split. Martinelli was hit. 
free position Rutgers. Yeah, but it's the pass to Bar by Barnes that opens up that, that opportunity. It's the long diagonal that makes the defense move its feet and is able to open up the space for Martinelli. Made her way into the eight meter arc. Here we go, At least that's what Coach Brand Sias thought as they push her back to the 12 meter fan. Here comes Martinelli, that's poked out. Barnes was nearing it, but it was stripped and taken away by Daly. Seemed to me like she was inside the eight meter arc, Kyle. Yeah, it certainly looked like it. And then she, she backs up uh, to the 12 meter fan and she had that one poked away as she was trying to go to goal. And Rutgers will keep it though. Syracuse couldn't control it through Lindley Block. Had it been an eight meter opportunity, Martinelli had been 10 of 16. Outstanding percentage. Schreiber, cross the way. Best stretch for Rutgers, I think, in possession, Kyle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and it would have been, and I like the, the response, there's a foul there. It's a card card. Card for Mallory Viha, sophomore defender from Ohio. Yeah, the, yeah, you can see the referee pointing to the chin. She got the stick up into the face of Hallie Barnes that time. So yellow for Vihar at 13.55. Two minutes for Vihar on the yellow. And Rutgers with the man up here and an opportunity to cut the lead to one. Yeah, you gotta take advantage of these situations when you're in there uh, against a team like Syracuse. Across the way, Rutgers fortunate to have that settled to Martinelli. Now McGinley from X, around Richardson. Right out front, a shot is saved by Richardson as Kaladny made a nice catch and look but Richardson turns it away and will waste some time on the man down. Well, yeah, the work on the man up by Rutgers was outstanding. The, the ball movement and then McKinley to be able to set up Kaledney on the cut, but give Richardson credit because she steps up and makes a big save for her team there. Kaledney, the freshman, one of those younger attacks that Coach Bransias was mentioning and getting them into the swing of things, and they've done that. Kaledney, the former All-American first teamer in 2012. A minute left on the man down for Syracuse. Leading four to two on goals from Tumalo, Boat, Cross, and Trainer. Rutgers with tallies from Trendell and McGinley. RU's only lead was at one nothing. The game was tied at one since then. Syracuse has led. It's now Orange four, Scarlet Knights two, 12.30 to go, half number one. Danny Breslauer, Kyle Franco here with you in Piscataway. On our vision presented by AT&T. Right now Syracuse just trying to kill off this penalty. Moving the ball around, keeping it away from Rutgers. A Rutgers team that has three more games left in this homestand. Villanova, Georgetown, and then top 10 Loyola of Maryland before going to Louisville and Cincinnati to end the Big East season. That prior to the conference tournament, which Rutgers will look to qualify for. Syracuse behind the cage, a rare turnover from Trainer, who has been very effective as a freshman from X. It was forced by Aaron Turcott. No surprise for the Scarlet Knight veteran defender out of Mountain Lakes. Turcott started all 16 games a year ago as a sophomore, causing 11 turnovers and causing 14 situations that allowed for ground balls. And this year, Turcott doing much of the same with nine ground balls and 11 caused turnovers and her 12 start in as many games. Kalata having some issues finding lanes to clear. McDougal stripped by two more. Yeah, good. Good strip by Tumalo. It was right in front of us too. Took it right out of the stick of McDougal. And then McDougal got it back. Well you mentioned backtracking Kyle. Uh, there's one of those yeah, situations. Two good, two good examples of it there by, by both teams. You know McDougal lost it to Tumalo and you know she didn't put her head down. Went back after and won it back for her team. Rutgers this year wins over Manhattan, Fairfield, Monmouth, Penn. As McGinley goes down the left side. 
and resets things. Delaware, Hoster, and Princeton, those all consecutive. And then Marquette, which has yet to join the Big East. Trendale, and then around to Schreiber. And Rutgers is within a goal. Well, we've seen that a couple times already for the Scarlet Knights. They were able to get a player free in front of Cage for, for a feed and a, and a finish, but they weren't the first two times they weren't able to convert it. That time, they are able to get it. Trendell puts it in the Schreiber, and she's able to finish it. For Schreiber, it is her eighth goal of the year. Trendell's eighth assist. Brings the Scarlet Knights within 4-3 of Syracuse here in the first half that Rutgers has done well to possess in. Yeah, Danny, and I, I thought one thing Rutgers did well is once Syracuse hit that, that early spurt for three goals in, in a minute and a half sure. to take a three-run lead, yeah, you know, that's a point even that early in a game where it can get away from you if the arm starts to get rolling and get some momentum. And I thought Rutgers did a good job of getting itself back in the game. It was able to get some possession in the attacking third after that and take some of that steam away from Syracuse, able to grab a couple goals here. And now we're in a pretty good, uh, you know, nip and tuck game now, 4-3 with 10 minutes to go in this first half. Many of those possessions have been through Chrissy Schreiber, who just got that goal. His father, Doug, was the National Player of the Year in lacrosse at Maryland during his time in college. Collada tried to back that up on the shot wide by Daly. It's a Syracuse team that had to find its chemistry too in the early season, losing to Maryland 19-11 in a game played at the Carrier Dome. Major turnaround started in a shutout in the second half against Towson, the number 16 team in the country that they defeated 10-3 and since then have played much better lacrosse. Their only loss in that stretch, Kyle, 13-12 to, to defending national champion Northwestern. Not a game in Evanston where they almost never lose. Okay, clear! Boats. Hands off Murray. Still no points today for Alyssa Murray, who had five goals and two assists against Villanova. And Collada read it again. Well, Kyle, uh, uh, defensive well, MVP yeah, well, so far. Well, I'll tell you what, Chelsea Intrapatolo did a nice job too on Murray, who was looking to dodge the goal, and Intrapatolo just stood her up that time, and that's what forced that poor pass by Murray in the turnover. 8.50 to go, half number one. Syracuse four, Rutgers three, the number five orange, and the Scarlet Knights looking for Big East win number one. Barnes down the left side for Kolodny. Clements off for Trendell. She has pretty much started every offensive possession for Rutgers. Barnes across the way, faked the pass. Very effective fake, actually got many of the eyes turning the other direction. And that was a stick issue, they'll, they'll check it. Everything seems kosher, Rutgers will keep the ball. Here with 8.14 to go first half. Yeah, well, I think that the fake pass and the ball didn't come out of the stick, so yeah. that's why they wanted to come and check it. Kolodny yeah. wide open, Rutgers will have a free position chance as Syracuse shifted over too many. It's gonna be from an angle. It's where Kolodny will get to start from. Free position restart looking at Richardson from an interesting angle. I think this is one you just pass off immediately. Yeah, you also have plays from this angle too to try and get somebody free. This time Rutgers just gonna reset it. Clements down low, the cutter Kolodny who lost it. Richardson the quick ground ball and she's hit by McGinley who was inside her crease with 7.56 left in the first. But Kyle back to Lily Kolada who has three intercepts on passes down low so far. She's matured a lot, said Laura Brandsire. It, it certainly week. helps too, Danny, when you have a goalkeeper that's able to do that and be, co be quick out of her crease, is able to read situations and really help her defense out. By doing that, stepping out, you, you know, when she sees where the pass is going to go and intercepting it, it really takes a lot of the pressure off your defenders. What's really key, uh, says Brandsire, is that she's no longer just the athlete that she came in as. She's now a lacrosse goalie. She started the position late in life and, and now embracing the fundamentals of it versus what she had been in the past. Just Sometimes one on of those athleticism. situations where, yeah, you just take an athlete and, and you kind of have an empty spot in goal, so you say, okay, who's a good athlete? Who could do it? 
and, and we can teach you how to play goalie. And, and as you said, Lily Collada has certainly matured uh, into a very good lacrosse goalie uh, over the years. And I know Brand Sias has laid a lot of that credit on Lisa Ojea, the Scarlet Knights assistant coach, for working with Collada in that regard. Three seconds! Three seconds! Murray, wide of Collada, it's backed up. 6.40 to go, half number one. It's 4-3 to three Syracuse, and you're right, Kyle, this is an orange team that can score, but in fairness to Rutgers, 11 or more goals in eight of their last 13 home games, Rutgers gets it back on a Syracuse throwaway. Yeah, the orange a little out of sorts right now. That time, an unforced turnover. Murray just ripped a shot that was, that was high, maybe not the best look. But this is a place here in the stadium complex that Rutgers has done so well the past couple of years. Five and three at home last year is deceiving because the three losses suffered by a combined three goals. And then this year, the only losses at Temple, at Notre Dame, and then a one goal loss, which seems apropos based on the history here at this field, to UConn. Yeah, but the luck hasn't been with Rutgers against Syracuse. The Orange have won the last 12 in this series, uh, including 6-2 and two here in Piscataway. So Rutgers has been unable to solve this Syracuse team over the years. Laura Brands High has, of course, never beaten Syracuse. Last year, it was April 7, 2012. Today, by the way, April 7, 2013. So a year ago today, it was a Syracuse 15-10 win coming at the Carrier Dome. But very much like today, which is a 4-3 score line here with 5.15 to go opening stanza, it was 7-6 Syracuse at the half. And it was Richardson, the goalkeeper today, as well as Alyssa Constantino, who was hurt, who each played a half. And in that game, Kyle Alyssa Murray had six goals and an assist. Yeah, and certainly so far in this first half, Rutgers has been able to keep Syracuse's top scorer quiet. Tumalo also had a hat trick in that game. And Rutgers playing without captain Stephanie Anderson today due to injury. She had a hat trick, and Annie McGinley, who already has a goal today, had a goal and three assists in that game. Lily Collada made five saves. She's been great early here. Kaladny down low, and a foul on Syracuse as making a move was Martinelli. Another interesting angle for Martinelli here. No numbers for Rutgers inside either. Martinelli on a bounce, and it's off the leg of Richardson, yeah, pops up in the air. You're right, Dan. I think Richardson made a really nice save there. It's a tight angle shot by Martinelli, but you can see what she wants to do. She's going to try and bounce that across the goalkeeper to the far post, give Richardson credit, able to get a leg to it, makes a nice save. That was Rutgers' leading goal scorer, Martinelli. 34 points, 27 goals this year. No goals for her yet today. Actually, no points. Haven't been many assisted goals here in the first. Just Trendell assisting Schreiber on a doorstep tally for Rutgers, and same could be said for Cross on maybe the best pass of the day from Tumala. Just 3.30 to go first half, Kyle, and Rutgers has to be thrilled with their effort. Yeah, they're, they're right in this game. Uh, you know, much as they were last year uh, up at the Carrier Dome. Tumalo, a diving shot, well wide, ambitious as yeah. Dion Collins yeah, interesting backs up. effort, a good, uh, you know, good improvis improvisation by Tumalo to dive there to get the shooting window. And this five-game homestand, it's so rare. It's, it is, and it's so important too. In April, nonetheless, sometimes you'll get those in February going into March, out of conference scheduling for larger conference opponents, sometimes beneficial. Murray loose for the first time, triple teamed. And it's stripped by Rutgers. Guess who? Amanda Trendell. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Murray did well to ride that first check, who I think it was from Trendell to get some space, but then good slide by Rutgers to close her down, and then Trendell gets up quickly and is able to track her down and get the strip. Well, what did we see with Rutgers men's lacrosse a few weeks ago, Kyle? A team that was struggling to go out and lose by one goal to a team that was ranked number one in the country at a time in Notre Dame. And here, Rutgers not necessarily struggling. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't say that they're struggling, no, they're not. but they are desperate for a win. Sure. I, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, and at this point now, playing a one-goal game with the right. number five I mean, team. You wouldn't necessarily country. say that about a team that's 8-3, but no. when you're looking at 0-2 in the Big East, 
you get the five game homestand, you've already dropped the first one to a Connecticut team that I think when you looked at the schedule, you would have said, well, that's one of the ones we have to get. Connecticut is that, receiving votes. Yeah, so is Rutgers, yeah. but that, I think that would be one where you say, hey, we need to get that one. So now you got Syracuse, the number five team in the country here. It's a big opportunity, and it's a game that you know you really need to win if you want to be a factor in the Big East. That threw the stick of Martinelli. It was a good look from Clements, but Syracuse the beneficiary. 155 to go, first half, Kyle. We may be looking at the final possession or two of the first 30 minutes. Yeah, we'll see what Syracuse does here uh, if it tries to hold for one, but if it has an opportunity oh, no to chance. run like this. Yeah. Block down low. And the Scarlet Knights D up to the task. They have continually been there the entire first half. It was a pass from Tumalo, and Rutgers gets it back. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering there, Syracuse may try and hold for one there, but not if it's got the opportunity to run on a counterattack like that and give Rutgers credit the defense got back in numbers and is able to break up that final pass. If, that, if the Scarlet Knight defense doesn't get back there, that's a goal for Syracuse. And Lily Collada will not uh, rush in any way, shape, or form. They figure Syracuse will try to press up from the midfielders here to force Rutgers' tempo up. It's Turcock clearing the area. Rutgers keeps it, approaching a minute to go first half. Syracuse played that game against Northwestern a couple weeks back, Kyle. Actually, just a week ago, back on March 30th. Eight ties in the 13-12 loss in Evanston. It was the Wildcats that scored twice in the final 10-32 to end Syracuse's three-game winning streak. The rematch of last year's national title game that was just a two-goal decision. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if they met again at yeah. some point this year. Certainly Florida and Maryland will have something to say about that, you have to figure. Rutgers here looking for a statement to end the first half from Barnes. 55 seconds to go in the first. And now Rutgers, Kyle, you have to figure holds for one. Yeah, I, I, I would here. 47 seconds here, I'm looking for the last shot. Unless you get a good shot, like a really yeah. clear cut opportunity that comes before that hold for one. McGinley, she does have a goal. It came back at the 1942 mark and brought Rutgers within 3-2. Martinelli up top, Trendell with 25 seconds and Rutgers will have a great look here. And it will be for Trendell. She got us going a minute and 50 seconds into the game, trying to bookend the half. Amanda Trendell from straight on. A bounce, sneaks through. Is it there? No, it's on the line and Richardson picks it up. Oh, Richardson's made several key stops for Syracuse. That time, that's the second time she stopped Trendell on a free position shot. Gets a little fortunate too because after it comes off her, it just sits there in front of the line, never goes over the line. Tough break for the Scarlet Knights. Five seconds to go in the half. Down low Syracuse, Kalata hops on it and makes a save as Murray tried to flick it in and that will end the first. So Rutgers, which had many opportunities late, had their defense stand strong. It's Syracuse four, Rutgers three at the half. It certainly was, you know, Rutgers got that early goal. Syracuse comes back and hits them with three straight. I thought it was a nice job by Rutgers to weather that storm and not fall out of the game early. You know, we got a pretty good ball game here going into the second half, 4-3 with the orange on top. No question, Syracuse's biggest lead was at 3-1. Rutgers has cut it to 4-3, heading into halftime. Back with the second 30 after this on Our Vision, presented by AT&T.
back at the RU turf field. Here in Piscataway on the Bush campus of Rutgers. Syracuse four, Rutgers three at halftime of RU women's lacrosse action on our vision presented by AT&T. Danny Breslauer, Kyle Franco here with you. Start of half number two, Syracuse a 4-3 lead. Kyle, Rutgers led 1-0. Syracuse has led since taking a 2-1 lead. Yeah, but it's all to play for. As you said, it's a one-goal game coming into the second half. You know, and, and Rutgers has is, is got to get itself back into this Big East race with a win. You're 0-2 in the conference. This is an important game for the sure. Scarlet Knights, and it's here to play for in the final 30 minutes. Five Big East games to follow. Villanova will have here on our vision on Saturday, and then Georgetown followed by Loyola. We'll also have that Loyola game on our vision for you on the 21st, then at Louisville, at Cincinnati. Syracuse has been a second half team all year, Kyle. That's something to look out for. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna keep doing what they 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 do. They're gonna try and run out in transition and transition and score in bunches. They'll mix up a few of their attack rotations, but it is still Murray triggering things. And she has been very quiet as well for the orange. Uh, so if she gets uh, untracked here, uh, that could be a big problem for the Scarlet Knights. As quiet as quiet can be, zero dash zero, as they say in lacrosse parlance. No goals, no assists. And Murray throws it away, but it was knocked down and kept by Trainer at X. Murray, top slot, knocked away, and a foul on Rutgers. It's on Turcotte. Syracuse and Rutgers each with 10 shots in the first. Ground balls. Rutgers doubling up the orange, 12 6. Draw controls, though, the big number, 7 1 in favor of Syracuse. And it's why they were able to stay out in front despite their turnover issues and a Syracuse free position chance. Rutgers won 10 of 11 on clear, Syracuse seven of eight as Kayla Kempney gets a look at goal on Collada. Kempney bounce, save Collada. Ground ball Rutgers for the senior goalkeeper. Yeah, Collada had a pretty good look at that. She could see what Kempney wanted to do. She was trying to go low on a bounce. Collada, nice job to get the stick down and cover up the five hole. Remember, she got beat through the legs already once, not gonna happen twice. Here's Trendell, and she's been nifty, very slick early on for Rutgers. Here with 28-30 remaining half number two, Syracuse four, Rutgers three. Here's the big stat. One of two now, Syracuse in free position. Rutgers 0 for four, and they ended that half with a couple of free position chances. Yeah, give, give Richardson the goal, goalie some credit too, because she's made a couple nice saves on the free positions, but you know, when you have those opportunities, you've gotta put them away in a game like this. Richardson's been the more active goalkeeper. You know, particularly, Danny, when it's a tight game, that could make a difference later on is the inability to convert from the free position. Flag on Syracuse. Rutgers gets it up top with a free position chance. Officials trying to draw it all out for the Syracuse defense. Saves went five for Richardson and two now for Collada after that last one. The fouls were an issue for the Orange. 18, Rutgers 11. Turnovers, though, Kyle. 12 for Syracuse, 6 for Rutgers. Kalodny will have another free position chance for Rutgers. Down low, a shot and a goal, and Rutgers ties it. It's Megan Clements. Clements is first of the day, and it's 4 4. Well, that's a set play from that free position because Kalodny's. Kalenny's going to look like she's going to go to goal, which is going to draw the defense in. Clemens just steps cr steps up, crease extended. Nice little feed from Kalenny. Pretty simple finish for Megan Clemens to put it away. And a good start to this second half for the Scarlet Knights. 17th goal of the year for Clemens. Kalodny, a first assist of the campaign. So you're right. I mean, that's as set as set plays come. And there's Clemens. She builds on her goal see total. Syracuse is definitely expecting a shot there. Uh, and the defense stepped in to try and block Kaledny's pass off, path off to goal. Able to dump the pass off the pass off to Clements, who scores. Clements, the junior attack from Pennington, New Jersey, and Hopewell Valley High School. Second on the team in goals scored. Now with that tally, it is her 17th. She was a major draw control expert last year for Rutgers with 34 of them, having 11 goals and three assists on the whole. Hopewell Valley, I know a school you, Kyle, uh, Kyle, you cover. It's always a power in this sport. Yeah, always pretty good in, in the cross. Uh, one of the better programs in Mercer County. It's a draw control infraction on Syracuse, the first of the day for them. Kempney, the one who gives it up to Schreiber. 
Schreiber had a goal for Rutgers that made it 4-3, and the Scarlet Knights since trailing 4-2 at the 1705 mark have held Syracuse scoreless for 20 minutes. And since then have tied it up at four. Yeah, the thing about Syracuse that concerns you though is it's the ability to score in bunches. Martinelli. It was deflected and it went over top of the bar. So yes, yeah, so you can't you can't sit back and say, okay, Syracuse hasn't scored in 20 minutes. We've got them locked down because we know the Orange have that explosiveness to put three or four on you in a hurry. Dodge split just missed by Barnes. Picked up Martinelli. McGinley decides to go up top to Trendell. Good reason, she scored a minute and 50 seconds into the game to make it 1-0 Rutgers. Trendell through two, goes through, it's deflected in. Amanda Trendell, second of the day and 13th of the year, and Rutgers leads. And Danny, that's just a wonderful individual effort by Amanda Trendell to take on two players, split dodge into the middle, Gets a little fortunate that the deflection is able to beat Richardson, but I'll tell you what, the build up to that by Trendell is outstanding. Great individual work by her to score that goal and put the Scarlet Knights back on top. Two goals in a minute for Rutgers. As we're 3.05 into the second and the Scarlet Knights lead the number five team in the country five to four. Trendell twice. Yeah, Trendell showed some, some real explosiveness, didn't she, on that goal. Just to blow by two defenders like they weren't even there. Oh, she's looked the fastest player on the field yeah, today. Yeah, she's been Rutgers' best player today. She was a varsity lacrosse and soccer captain during her time at Yorktown High School. Four-time sectional champ. Syracuse a run out. Great chance, and that's how quickly they tie it. The goal is for Kelly Cross, an assist for Kepney. It's Cross's second today. Yeah, and it's pretty textbook off the restart. Syracuse right back into it, moved the ball quickly on the counter before Rutgers can get set. Kelly Cross, good finish, crease extended, but that's what we were talking about. Just like that, you've got the lead if you're Rutgers. You can't sit back and rest because Syracuse can hurt you so quickly, and just like that, the orange are level again. Tried 20 seconds just like that, as Collada will speak with the official after the goal to tie it at five. Check that as Kelly Cross's first goal today, her seventh of the year. Amy Cross had the earlier tally. Here we go, Ryan. Our ball. Kempney the assist. Oh, you guys get Marie, let's go. Yeah, but it was it was textbook off the restart. You know, being able to score from that because you moved the ball quickly, the Rutgers defense was unable to get set, and that's what gave Syracuse the opportunity to score. Kyle, we often speak of draw controls being so big, and it appears today Syracuse just has it going on that end, and certainly, it's why despite yeah, the fact they've struggled, they're still here. That's exactly what I was going to say. They certainly do. 8-1 uh, to one now on the draw controls, uh, and it's helped neutralize some of that as turnovers. We talked about the 12 turnovers for the Orange kind of evened it out. Tumalo almost stalking from X. You know she's dangerous to even score from there. She did it in the first, tried it again. That hits something. I believe the woodwork. Might have caught a pipe. Yeah. yeah. Run out for Rutgers through Trendell. And she's hit. And Rutgers will keep it with a 5-5 game. 25-50 to go. Second half. The reason why Syracuse was able to jump out on Northwestern a couple weeks ago is they won 11 of 13 draw controls in the first half and ended the game with an 18 to 9 advantage. And we were starting to see some of that today. That could have been a charge on Rutgers. Instead, it will go on Syracuse for the push. The Syracuse bench yelling for a charge, and Gary Gate especially. I think we didn't give Gate his full due. He led Syracuse to three straight NCAA yeah, titles. Yeah, a good player, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, first team All-American three times. And he's easily the best dressed person here today. <laughs> no doubt. Barnes. 
Up top for Trendell. Checked nicely by Boat, and then Boat called for a foul. We're just tuning in, we've played 35 minutes. We're five minutes into the second half. Rutgers and Syracuse, the number five team in the land, tied at five. Scarlet Knights looking for Big East win number one. They've lost two of three after starting eight and one. Seven and one, excuse me. Now sit at eight and three, 0 oh and two in the conference. Martinelli. Had the cutter Vlahos, who has to reset things off a drop. Martinelli down low, and then falling down, Clemens does it. Rutgers lead 6-5. What an outstanding finish by Megan Clements. We haven't seen her in that position often today, popping up in front of Cage. Martinelli able to find her there, but how about the catch and finish by Clements off balance to be able to finish that off. That's just outstanding. It's a spectacular goal from Clements. Goodness. And the crowd giving their appreciation for that goal from Clements falling down and somehow in one motion able to complete it. She's so athletic too, uh, is why she's able to, to complete that goal in one motion. As you said, Danny, just a spectacular finish uh, to be able to, to put that past Richardson as she's falling down. Second for Clements, 18th of the year. For Martinelli, it's a team best eighth assist. And Rutgers has spread it out this year. It's a far cry, Kyle, from Danielle Macera and about a thousand assists last year. <laughs> Well, yeah, when you lose your top assist player. Uh, of all time. Yeah, yeah of yeah. all time. Somebody else has is, is got to feed him. Rutgers a draw control, leading 6-5 here. So we approach about a third of the way through the second half. But you know what? That's an adjustment Laura Brand-Sias has made in that second half is to get Megan Clements closer to goal. Remember, she was out top at the point trying to run things in that first half. We've already seen twice she's able and able to get in tight today. I like her much better in front of goal using her athleticism. She's also taller than a lot of her defenders. Remember, in a series that dates back to 1998, Rutgers is 3-14 all-time against Syracuse. The Orange has won their last 12 meetings against the Scarlet Knights. But for now, Rutgers holds a lead in the second half. McGinley, across the way. Rutgers very confident in their passing today. Martinelli's triple team, they know the threat she can pose. Around the goal to Barnes. And a foul first as Richardson stoned it. Barnes will have a free position chance. Haley Barnes on Kelsey Richardson. Barnes to goal and puts it in. 7-5 RU. Well, Rutgers finally opens up a two goal advantage today and I wonder if that goal by Megan Clements has just spurred her teammates on a little bit. And that time Haley Barnes steps up from the free position and is able to beat Richardson. See, Rutgers has got it going on right now. Let's see if they can keep the pressure on Syracuse. And Richardson feeling the heat a little bit here in the second half as the Scarlet Knights have four goals here in the first seven minutes and 14 seconds of the second. In addition to Haley Barnes, For Barnes on free position, her 13th goal of the year, just her third free position in seven chances. But why not? The Scarlet Knights had everything to play for at the half, as you said, Kyle, and they, they've come out playing like that. But here's the transition that Syracuse is so dangerous in. Trainer. Well cut off, though, by Mahone. Mr. Franco, can they win a couple draws? That's really got to be the question. Yeah, they got to see if they can find a way to, to win one or two here before the end of the night. Well, a forced turnover once but again. They've been Lajos. able to do that, though, which has kind of neutralized Syracuse's advantage in the draw controls. Long outlet Collada. So get it back from Mahone, but won't be able to save it. Trying to kind of throw the stick at it. Yeah, Rutgers a, a little bit uh, out of sync there on the clearance. 
Mahone may have been better served to just turn and run up field, but this will be a very, not yet, very not tough that, chance. Yeah, Collada stuck out a goal here, way off her line. Syracuse has got a great opportunity here. Now the Syracuse players are still pretty far from goal. Nonetheless, it is a foot race potentially between Trainer and Collada to the front of goal. Remember, Collada not only has to get to goal, but then get set in it. That's exactly what she's trying to do, and that's what she does. Trainer makes it 7 6. You know, and Trainer actually shows some great composure here because Collada does get back in front of her. She just gives her a little head and shoulder fake to throw the goalie off balance and then is able to finish. Rutgers, though, put itself in a tough position there with a poor clearance. Yeah, failed clearance, something Rutgers was very good at in the first half to the tune of 10 of 11. Just that one can put you in a tough go. and. That and, was the case here. And what's here. disappointing about it is that the Scarlet Knights have been able to get all this momentum. They had that spectacular goal by Clements. Barnes scores from the free position. You're up two. And then you get sloppy in your own back and you give one away, uh, you know, for Syracuse to get right back in this. Syracuse faithful traveling down from Central they New York. They travel well. They do. Down I-81. I've been all over the place this week. <laughs> down in Atlanta. That's I, right. I saw a whole bunch of them at the Princeton yesterday uh, for the men's game. They can make that one trip, right? Yeah, sure. Rutgers looking for a crucial draw control. They can't get it. Pops out to Syracuse and Murray with lots of room to operate. She'll settle things down with Rutgers up 7-6, 21 minutes to go second half. RU trailed 4-3 at the break to number five Syracuse, which is looking to improve to 3-0 in the Big East and win a 15th consecutive Big East regular season game. Well, Danny Murray's been so quiet for Syracuse. You just wonder if she might pop up here for the Orange in a, in a key spot. The Orange actually lost the Big East title match last year to Loyola, Maryland, 13-7 in a game played at the Carrier Dome. Whistle before the goal. And it's on Trainer for hooking around. Trainer, who was bidding for a hat trick, her last goal was the second of the game for her and 24th of the year to cut the Rutgers lead to one with an infraction to give RU the ball back. Yeah, fortunate break for Rutgers there. Because Trainer was able to put that pass Colada. Very dangerous pass back to the keeper there. So much confidence in Lily Colada to operate in the back. Right in the center of your screen. The senior out of Nesconset, New York. Long walk up the middle of the field for the most valuable player at Smithtown East High School who has turned into Rutgers' starting goalkeeper for the last 60 games. Martinelli. Cut off by Natalie Glennell. And she's continuing to work. Glennell knocked it out. Yeah, whistle goes against Glennell, but it's good work by her against Martinelli. Couldn't let, wouldn't let her shake her. We're inside of 20 minutes to go. Martinelli herself. Deflected back, Kolodny has it, and she's fouled. A card potentially, and it is on Harbison. The yellow at 19.27 of the second. Yeah, referee says she chopped the stick down. It's the second yellow of the game for Syracuse. First one was on Vihar at 13.55 of the first. This one Harbison at 19.27 of the second. Yeah, man up now for the Scarlet Knights. A great opportunity to go back in front by two. Neither side has really had a flat portion. And Barnes, another free position. She scored on one just a few minutes ago at the 22-46 mark. And here Barnes at 19-13. We'll have another look at Kelsey Richardson. Barnes instead behind the cage. Their man up right now, no need to force. It's a two minute yellow. The release is at 17.27 for Harbison. We're currently at 18.55. Tough pass that went through McGinley. It's loose and Syracuse collects. Ground ball for Casey Mock. Yeah, interesting though. Trendell not in the game on that man up opportunity that time for the Scarlet Knights. They're going to get her back in now. Oh, shorthanded giveaway. 
But that is not what Syracuse wanted. They would have much preferred to hold on to that and just kill the clock for the man up chance for Rutgers. And now Scarlet Knights with a minute to try to make something happen. It is RU7, Syracuse 6. Rutgers had a great stretch after trailing 4-3 at the break. Brought it all the way to 7-5 at 22-46 remaining. Barnes, check down. Was knocked down by Glenell. Martinelli's on the back post, Kyle. That's where they go. Katrina Martinelli from Barnes. She can't get it. I saw that nobody, developing. I'll tell you what, yeah, you could see it developing on the back post. She was left on mark. Syracuse defender fell down, too, trying to recover. I don't know if Richardson got a piece of it or not, but it, it definitely caught some pipe, too. 20 seconds on the man up. Rutgers has to move quickly, but they'll still keep the possession. Release for Harbison. Full strength we are at 17-25. 7-6 Rutgers leads, trying to defeat Syracuse for the first time in 13 chances. Martinelli has it knocked away, backed up by McGinley. Yeah, Martinelli that time tried for the wraparound. Richardson knocks it away. Martinelli again. Loose, taken by Clemens. She already has two, and then McGinley puts it home. Rutgers back up by two. Well, it's the work of Megan Clements that sets that goal up. First of all, she's in the right place on the back post to pick up the rebound after the initial shot is blocked, then backs around, wraps around for Maxson, is able to pick out a cutting McGinley. Also, nice finish by Annie, Annie McGinley. First time in and out of the stick, nice and quick. McGinley from Clements for Rutgers at 17.02 to take an 8-6 lead. And Danny, even though Rutgers didn't score on that man up opportunity, it was able to keep possession of the ball there. So even once it ended, still on the attack, Clements then in the right place at the right time, picks it up, great pass for McGinley. And then also I love the finish by Andy McGinley, in and out of the stick real quick, had to be too. Clements, who already had two goals, now adds an assist. For McGinley, it's her second tally, her first coming back at 1942 of the first to cut Syracuse's lead to three to two as you get a look at Annie McGinley and how great she has been coming off of injury, now with her 11th goal in just four starts. Yeah, such an important player for them too, to have her back. Uh, it's just such a big boost for this squad. And, and you know, a second one, look at this, Megan Clements only had three assists coming into that game. Yeah. It's almost you find that hard to believe the way you've seen her pass the ball today with her vision. Uh, and being able to find teammates. Uh, so that was a little surprising to me that she only had three assists, but today she's certainly showing that she can be a facilitator as well as a goal scorer. She's had a couple nice dishes today to set up teammates. Great call, Kyle. Danny Breslauer, Kyle Franco here with you. 16.40 to go, second half. Rutgers 8, Syracuse 6. The number five orange in all the land. They're the defending Big East regular season champs. They lost in the Big East title game. Rutgers 8-3, and 0-2 oh in the Big East, looking for a massive momentum swing heading into the middle portion of this five-game homestand. Webster. Now Murray, who has been shut out entirely. Six goals last year against Rutgers, has scored five goals in the last three games, fires wide. But even that shot, that's a difficult shot. She's got to play her right in her face. She's got to work hard just to get that little window to fire it. That's good defense by Rutgers. Tumalo has picked up a lot of that slack in some respects today on the attack. We're nearing the midway point of the second half. Rutgers a two goal lead. It's the largest for Rutgers. They've done it twice now at 7-5 and 8-6. Syracuse had it at 4-2. Whistle before the foul. Charge. Rutgers gets it back. Tumalo called for it. That's two consecutive Syracuse charges. Yeah, it is. It's two consecutive charges. I've taken a goal off the board for the Orange. I thought. I mean, I actually thought Tumalo made a really nice move yeah. on the spin, the score there. Uh, and I actually got lucky to be called for the charge. It's tough to see. It's all the way on the far side of the field. 
from from our position, but I thought it was a pretty good move by Tumalau, to it's be a, honest. It's actually something the Syracuse bench was complaining about on the last Rutgers possession about Barnes leaning in. And that time, Tumalo doing much of the same. In this case, Rutgers getting the benefit of the doubt. While well, they spoke of using strength from the Friends of Jacklin program for Jenna Camiolo, one of the honorary captains today, Kyle, and certainly a lot of that momentum carrying onto the field too. It's great to see. Holly DeMuro allows for the clear and a Rutgers offensive possession as we have entered the second half of the second half. Yeah, winning time. Busy week for our vision. We're here with you five of the seven days of your next week. Men's lacrosse Tuesday night against top 15 Princeton. Softball on Thursday against, coincidentally, Princeton. Friday and Sunday, baseball against Cincinnati. Scarlet Knights could be first place in the Big East Conference by the end of today. And then on, on Saturday, we'll get this same women's lacrosse team hosting Villanova in their next home game. Kyle, a tempo change? Yeah. You're just, just taking the air out of the game a little bit here for Rutgers. You got a two goal lead here. Uh, you know, and you would certainly like to extend it to three, but you can see just slowing some things down here, uh, trying to get a really good look. You know, when he gets to kill a little clock, too. They played about as good a game as they can, huh? Yeah, they really have. And, and, that's, and that's exactly why they're in position to win this game here. Let's see if they can close it out. Clemens has a pair. She's standing at X right now. Trendell with it. Got us going with the first goal and added another early second. Rutgers played a tight second half with UConn too. It was 7-7 before the Huskies got the late game winner. Rutgers keeps it. Crease extended with Clements. Great look there from behind. Showing you exactly what Clements has to operate with. Oh, throw away. And this is a foot race for Trendell. She's shown that she can win these. And she does have to use the stick and that's a foul. Yeah, I think that time Trendell was looking to make her move before she actually caught the ball. It ends up coming off the end of her stick, and Rutgers turns it over. Are you 5-1 and one at home this year? All games played right here at the stadium complex. Run out for Syracuse. Trainer leads it again. Dodges two, fires away, save Kalata. Oh, great run by Trainer to slip away from her marker, just absolutely blew past her defender. But how about Lily Collada steps up for the Scarlet Knights and makes a terrific save. She was the storyline this week in practice. How has she matured year one to year four? And I think we're seeing exactly what that teaching has allowed for. Muro all the way across the field. McDougal ran without it. It goes back to get the most important part of the sport, the ball. Rutgers a two goal lead, eight to six over number five Syracuse, 11.30 to go second half. You mentioned winning time, Kyle. You add another, and I know goals can come in bunches with draw controls. But hey, get another in the way that their defense has played today. That's a major confidence and you, booster. And you know when lacrosse goals can, can come in bunches. I mean, just remember the game we did the other <laughs> day uh, against Providence, the men's right, game, where, yeah. where Rutgers couldn't hold a three-goal lead with two and a half minutes left and, and ended up falling in overtime. So you know um, that in this sport, they can come they can come quickly. And you cannot you cannot take your foot off the pedal. Same uh, said for the men's team last yeah, night. Yeah. It's certainly here with 11-16 to go. Uh, far too soon. Uh, to really take the foot off the pedal, and I, I don't know if you go in the clock kill mode yet, no. getting that kind of that four corners sort of let it run out. I think you still have to be aggressive. You still have to attack the goal uh, and look to extend this lead. Dean Smith reference in the spirit of the final four. Eleven minutes to go. Yeah, Syracuse certainly going to extend its defense here, as you can see. Looking to pressure the ball, force a turnover, down by two. That's from Gary Gates' instruction. The 
Sixth year head coach of the Orange right, and the throw away. That's why, that's why you do it there. There's the pressure. 1v1. Trainer on Turcotte with Collada behind her. Trainer to her right hand side, and it's a one goal game. Yeah. And that's why you do the pressure. That's why Syracuse turns up the pressure. Because then Rutgers turns the ball over. All of a sudden, it's Trainer one on one in transition. I'll take Trainer against Turcotte one on one all day. Trainer's going to win that battle every time gets by her and then is able to beat Collada, but that stems from the Syracuse pressure on defense, which forced the turnover. You'll take that because Turcotte is running backwards. It's, it's not her fault that she has to yeah, she's get on her heels. Yeah, yeah, she's on her heels uh, against a, a terrific offensive player like Trainer, and Trainer's probably going to win that battle nine out of ten times. Patrick for Trainer, 25th goal of the year for the Syracuse freshman from Niskayuna, New York. 10.35 remaining, and just when Rutgers had a chance to go up three, it's a one-goal game. Well, now, now you felt the pressure, though, Danny. You've seen what Syracuse is going to do the rest of this way in terms of defense and how they're going to come out and play you. So you felt it now. Kyle, big infraction. It's on Vlahos on the draw control. Yes, Syracuse yep, can now tie. another one, yep. Momentum shifts aplenty. Rutgers had 21 shots on goal on Friday. They haven't had that many today, but they have peppered Kelsey Richardson. Yeah, she's been busy. They forced her to make a couple good saves today. They've worked her. Are you with eight goals, led by a pair from Clements. Pair from Trendell. Couple from McGinley as well. Webster. Now to Murray. You always wonder when the star will wake up. And maybe this is her shot right here. Shooting space infraction. Turk got cleared out. Murray will go to X quickly to trainer around the cage. Nothing there. Good cutoff. It's from Vlahos. Making up for the yeah, draw you control. See, you could see Murray a left-handed shot there. Didn't want to take that right hand and give it, gave it up. Trainer. Tumalo right down the middle. And a free position. It was a good catch by Bridget Daly, and she'll have a chance yeah, to tie the yeah, game. And a good, yeah, and a good find by Tumalo. Bridget Daly. A free position chance. She is one for four on the year. Daly ties it up. She ripped that, didn't she? Knew exactly what she wanted to do. Right down the middle, she went and then winds up and is able to rip it past Lily Collada. A timeout for Rutgers, and I think it's a good timeout by Laura Brancias. For Bridget Daly, her eighth goal of the year on free position, her second. And it is eight to eight. Timeout, Laura Brancias, as Syracuse has scored a pair of goals in a row. After the Scarlet Knights took an eight to six lead on Annie McGinley's goal was 17-02. Yeah, and you know Danny Rutgers in possession there, a chance to go up three. But you know, give credit to the Orange because Syracuse certainly turned its defense up uh, and went out and came out and pressured the Scarlet Knights and able to force a turnover, which led to a goal. And then, uh, as they've done all day, Syracuse able to win a draw control, which ends up leading to a free position opportunity for Daly. Uh, and Daly, hey, how about that finish? She winds up and, and absolutely had a little velocity on that, didn't she? Chance to give a game summary. Uh, Rutgers and Syracuse and women's lacrosse here today on our vision presented by AT&T. There's Gary Gate, the head coach of Syracuse, the former lacrosse All-American for the Orange. Ten-time NCAA champion, and you say, how is that possible? But three as a player for the Orange, seven as an assistant coach of the University of Maryland women's lacrosse program from 95 to 01. And the crowd gets a chance to watch him and his Orange today against the Scarlet Knights and Laura Brandsias in her 11th year as head coach of the Scarlet Knights. It is an 8-8 game, 9-21 remaining second half. Danny Breslauer, Kyle Franco here with you. There is the scoreboard at the RU turf field which got lit up first by Amanda Trendell, a minute and 50 seconds in. And then Tumalo tied it up for Syracuse. Trainer put the Cuse up 2-1. Then Syracuse's biggest lead came from a free position goal by Boat. 
to put the Orange up three to one after three goals in a minute and a half at the 25-15 mark of the first. Annie McGinley scored to make it 3-2. Then Amy Cross made it 4-2 Orange, and Schreiber made it 4-3 for Rutgers 10 minutes before the half. Syracuse went scoreless for 20 minutes, Kyle, heading into the second half before Megan Clements and Amanda Trendell made it 5-4 Rutgers. Syracuse breaks the drought through Kelly Cross to make it 5-5. Then Clements and Barnes put Rutgers up 7-5. Trainer makes it 7-6. McGinley makes it 8-6. And then Laura Brandsize watches her team give up goals to Trainer and Daly. We are 8-8, 9-21 Yeah, as you said, 9-21, and it's left, and it's all to play for. Uh, at 8-8, who's going to it comes to who's going to step up and make a play for their team, um, and who's going to you know have that little bit of quality in the final third. There are certainly uh, a number of players on the field that, that can do it uh, for both sides. And it's just going to be a matter of, of who takes that responsibility on their shoulder and who makes a play. Rutgers, which went 4-4 four and four in the Big East a year ago and going 9-7, and seven, looking for win number 9 on the year already today, April the 7th. Syracuse, which won 15 straight games last year. It's a school record. They went 19 and 4, 8 and 0 in the Big East. They have a possession with a chance to take the lead for the first time since halftime. Cuse led 4-3 at the break. They played some close games this year. A 10-9 win over number eight Virginia at the Carrier Dome and that loss to Northwestern of 13-12. But here, their toughest test so far inside the Big East. They beat Connecticut 18-7 and Villanova 19-7, so fair to say they haven't been tested just yet. Murray, now to Amy Cross, across the way for a workaround to X. It's Kempney. Tumalo. There we go, right! Taking their time of the orange here in a tie game. The fake handoff by Tumalo right down and over the pipe. Well, nice little action by the orange there. They just faked a little misdirection on the handoff. Tumalo was able to open herself up for a shot, uh, but she lets it go high. You see some nifty lacrosse plays that can make go, the highlight Jay. reel or some fake passes have everybody wondering where the ball yeah, even yeah, is. Yeah, we see Syracuse run that little handoff uh, a lot today. So in that time, I have Tumalo just faked it. Murray calling out instructions. 7.25 to go, it's 8-8. Rutgers in number five Syracuse. The Muro good D to knock that away, but it's picked up. Ground ball for Tumalo and a whistle away from the ball. Syracuse is applauding, and they appear to be the ones getting the opportunity. And they'll get it through Katie Webster. A big moment coming up here for Lily Pilata against Webster on a free position. Webster. Straight on with Collada. She went early. Katie Webster may have left early. And that is yep, the case. That is the call. You could hear the Rutgers bench yell it. Oh, they'll say that each team had a yeah. player leave okay. early. Okay, okay they'll so push one back each. It. Webster will go again. 8-8 eight, eight game, 7-0-2 to go. And Webster on a bounce, it is in. 9-8 Syracuse, they lead for the first time since halftime. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, it's, it's unfortunate for Rutgers because the referee ruled that two players left early, so they retake it instead of the Scarlet Knights getting a save if it had just been Webster. Now they're talking about something else here. Stick check. Looks okay and the goal will stand. But Webster, given a second opportunity from the free position, wasn't going to miss twice, and she's able to beat Collada low and to the near post. Ninth goal of the year for Webster. Comes off free position, gives the Orange a 9-8 lead. 
She'll head to the bench. Get some high fives from her team as the coaching staffs are feverishly jotting down notes, perhaps for the next time out. One of which you would have to think is coming up soon for one of these two sides. Vlahos given the major responsibility of trying to win this one up against Kempney. 6.56 to go. Syracuse leads 9-8 on three consecutive goals in the last 11 minutes. Yeah, and this is where the draw controls are hurting the Scarlet Knights. You know, they've been able to neutralize it to some respect with the turn by forcing the turnovers, but right here late in the game, Syracuse able to win another draw control. Bridget Daly. Trainer to X now moves around and gives off Webster. Inside the final six and a half. Syracuse led Rutgers four to three at the break by as many as two at three one as McDougal may pick up a card here for hitting Murray in the head. She will. Oh, it's a tough, tough spot to take a card too, down one with with 6.16 to go, so now the orange get to go man up. Yellow at 6.16, so McDougal's release will be at 4.16. Man up for Syracuse. Looking to extend their Sorry. Big East regular season win streak to 15. Little move and shake for Tumalo. Pretty amazing, Kyle. That Alyssa Murray. She had 29 goals and 14 assists. No score yet. Or no assists, no points today for Syracuse's top player. Uh, but that said, the Orange still have got the lead here late in the game. That's a sign of a good team, too, when, you're, when your best player uh, isn't producing on a particular day. A lot of that because of the Rutgers defense, which has taken her away and done an outstanding job against her. Uh, but that's a sign of a, a terrific team. Five minutes to go. Syracuse knows they do not have to rush. There's only about 45 seconds in the penalty to go. That one knocked around in front. Collada got a piece. The question is who comes out with it? Rutgers had it just momentarily and it goes to Webster. And I think that will be a Rutgers foul. It will. 30 seconds on the man up for Syracuse. They'll send Vlahos back yeah. who will take her time. Yeah, she's, I think Vlahos is the one that committed the foul there. She just bumped Webster who had got gained control of the ball. The release is 10 seconds away. And then they'll play full strength and Syracuse was more than content it seems Kyle to hold on to it the entire time. That's the case. McDougal yeah. on. Yeah, the orange certainly the clock went inside right now. And a shot will it count. Tumalo may have been in the crease. No goal. Tumalo was in the crease. Well, that's the third time, Danny, today. Syracuse has had a, had a goal wiped away by either an offensive foul or that time a crease violation by Tumalo, giving Rutgers life in this game. Kalata being chased by Trainer. She may need to be bailed out. No one's there to help Kalata, who's going to have to force it away in a second. Gets it away to Demuro, nice catch. Up ahead looking McDougal, it was knocked down and taken away by Syracuse and Amy Cross. And the Orange get it back with 3.30 nice to the go. pressure defense from Syracuse is giving Rutgers problems. The Orange have really turned up the heat defensively in this final 10 minutes. Rutgers hasn't scored since 17.02 remaining when they took an 8-6 lead on an Annie McGinley goal. 
Orange led 4-3 at the half. Rutgers led the entire second half until the 6.56 mark when Webster's free position put the Orange up. Now three minutes left now, Danny. Rutgers has got to find a way to get the ball back. Cross. Still Amy Cross, and she was hit by Demuro. Well, this last 10 minutes, I think Syracuse's defense has been a difference in this game. They've ratcheted up the pressure, uh, and Rutgers has had some issues dealing with that. One goal differentials, Kyle, have been the staple of the RU turf field, and Rutgers women's lacrosse biggies play the better part of the last two years. Could have another one here today. Two of Rutgers' three losses this year are by one goal. The loss to Temple, the loss to UConn. Lost by three to Notre Dame. This team has been around every game. Two minutes left, 9-8 Syracuse. Scarlet Knights looking for Big East win number one. Syracuse looking to go to 3-0 in the conference. Flag coming. And it will be Trainer who has been the MVP today with a hat trick that draws the foul. And yeah, you can see Lily Collada out of her cage now, outside the crease here as Rutgers is going to try and force a turnover. You'll see it here on the restart. Well, this is do or die. You either force the turnover or go down two goals. Trainer with 140 left. Tosses it to Webster. Now Murray nearly poked away with a foul. Clock stops at 132. One thirty-two and counting now. Yeah, it's a good game of keep away. Murray down low cross. Tumalo and Kalata can't dive and Kempney puts it home. It's 10-8 Syracuse and Rutgers will now have to push the tempo here late. Well, uh, eventually if you keep it away like that, you move the ball quickly. Once Kalata's got to come out of the goal to pressure the ball, there's going to be an opportunity. Syracuse works it around brilliantly. And then there it is. There's the finish in front of an open that uh, diving Kalata can't get back in time. Tumalo the assist, her second of the day, 19th of the year. Kempney's goals are her 11th. And Syracuse, a two goal lead for the first but time since comes, 14. Yeah, that goal comes from the ball movement though. Um, particularly once Rutgers has got to come out and press to try and get it back. Um, you move it around, there's going to be open space there and Tumalo is able to pick out Kemp Kempney uh, for what's a pretty easy finish in the end. Good effort by Kalata trying to get back, just unable to save it. Full week of practice coming up. For Rutgers, Kyle, Scarlet Knights will take on Villanova Saturday here at the RU Turf Field. That at 1 p.m. start will have it. Timeout, Syracuse. Yeah, and Rutgers just can't get a draw control right now, and that's really come back to haunt them. You know, once we got into this final 10 minutes and they, and they had the lead, uh, just unable to get the draw controls, and Syracuse uh, able to use that to its advantage. Uh, and right now, the Scarlet Knights can't even get the ball. It's a happy Gary Gate. Smile on his face, a 111 to go. And there's the Rutgers huddle. Laura Brandsias trying to draw something up for the final minute, down two goals and without the ball. Yeah, tough task for the Scarlet Knights to get two here in the last minute 11. Uh, particularly, you know, since they don't have the ball right now, and then also if they do score, then they'd have to win a draw control, which has been a big issue today. Rutgers came into the weekend second in the NCAA in scoring defense. At 6.2 goals allowed per game. They allowed just eight on Friday to UConn. And Lily Collado ranked third in the Big East in saves per game at nearly seven. Fifth in save percentage. And seventh in goals against average at a shade under 6.7. And this crowd has had a show today, Kyle, and I think a really solid women's lacrosse game. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think it's two teams that are, that are really good. 
Uh, unfortunately, as it stands right now for Rutgers, they're looking at 0-3 in the Big East. Uh, and it's such a tough league, too, um, because you're talking about Louisville uh, still to come. you still got Loyola to come. still got Georgetown to come. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, you know, forgiveness in this league. Laura Brand Sias, a 105-84 and 84 record coming into this year, two school best 12 win seasons. Because, because ooh, now they get turnover. That's well done. From behind, just completely blind, a great strip for Rutgers. And with 106 left, they'll have the ball and a chance to at least make this interesting. Timeout Rutgers. Kyle, I feel like yeah, every game we've that. called yeah. the past two weeks has had yeah, this Rutgers situation. Rutgers avoided Rutgers need that turnover. They got it immediately too, which is key right from the restart. Uh, so now you got to go quick though. This has got to be this has got to be fast. So Laura Brand Science here, I think is going to try and draw something up where they can get a goal right from the restart, move the ball quickly, um, because you got to score score fast. It, you know, Danny, but I was just trying to finish the point. Is sometimes you can have the good year in the Big East and still be the odd team looking out because it's so stacked. Um, with Syracuse, Georgetown, Notre Dame. Uh, we know Louisville's good. Loyola Rutgers is uh, a real solid team this year. You know, so you could finish with a, with a nice record and uh, unfortunately kind of be the odd man out uh, in this league. Here's to be a captain's discussion of some kind going on with the officials. Bridget Daly and Lily Collada both out there. I think it had something to do with maybe where one of the sticks was positioned. How do you remember which stick is yours? <laughs> I would probably, I'd part. probably forget yeah. which one is mine. Busy week for our R Vision crew. We hope you'll be with us for all of it. Rutgers, Princeton, and men's lacrosse on Tuesday. Softball on Thursday against the same Tigers. Baseball against Cincinnati Friday and Sunday. And Saturday, women's lacrosse against Villanova. Well, Clements is going to start with the ball for Rutgers. So let's see what Laura brand size has, has drawn up here. Uh, Clements may just try to go right to goal. Syracuse, the lead of 10 to 8. That with 106 remaining. Scarlet Knights have been scoreless for the last 16 minutes as the Orange have gone on a 4-0 run. Tamiro is stripped from behind, and that could be the game-ending turnover as uh, Becca Block takes it away. That's your game changer, Kyle. Oh, how about this? Syracuse, and really when it became academic, throws it away. Demuro over the head of the referee. And it goes to Syracuse. And that one should just about do it. With 40.5 seconds on the clock. Uh, you could hear Megan Clemens groan as she came off the field here right in front of us, and she knows that it's it's a missed opportunity for her team today. Rutgers had the lead in this game, a two-goal lead, you know, with half 15 minutes left and just unable to finish it off. You know, give Syracuse credit. Final five seconds, Syracuse can just back it out. The Orange score four goals in a row over the final 10 minutes. And they will leave Piscataway with a hard-fought 10-8 win. Yeah, Danny, I thought Syracuse defense changed this game in the last two minutes when they came out with that high pressure. It really rattled Rutgers. There were some turnovers there for the Scarlet Knights. That and then the draw control. Syracuse dominant in the face-off circle there, uh, and that was a big advantage for them. You could see Rutgers was fired up today uh, and ready to go, but unfortunately for them, they're unable to close it out. And you can see the emotion on the face here. Rutgers knows that this is a missed opportunity in the Big East race. Number five, Syracuse goes to seven and three. Three and zero oh in the Big East. Rutgers falls to eight and four, zero oh and three in conference. We'll see you Tuesday night for Rutgers Princeton men's lacrosse at a 7 p.m. opening face-off. Thanks for joining us today. The thank yous to send out to our entire R Vision crew. On behalf of Kyle Franco and our producer director,
Colin Osborne. I'm Danny Breslauer saying good afternoon from Piscataway. Syracuse 10, Rutgers 8 on our vision, presented by AT&T.